Hello bonjour and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wines video. Today I want to share four extremely fun and fascinatingly interesting wine tasting exercises and say wine tasting setups that you can do. You can easily organize to train your palate at analyzing wine better and more importantly have a lot of fun learning a whole lot about your favorite vino, your favorite wine style and the wine world in general. You can do these trainings, these taste buds, workouts on your own comparing two glasses of two different wines before dinner or even better host a wine tasting party with your best wine enthusiasts friends. Let's dive in and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Let's go. Tasting one wine is delightful, it's delicious, it's fun, it's super interesting as well. Sharing it with great people is certainly even better and takes the experience to another level. But tasting and comparing two wines is even a whole lot more fun. But what do you do to make it interesting? Not just more fun by simply drinking more wines. Well, challenge yourself or your guests to see if you can understand some crucial aspects of wine by tasting them in the real world in two different wines. Starting with tasting two different wines of the same style, so let's say the same grape variety but from different regions and countries or countries. Example, a red Malbec from Argentina and a French Malbec. Possibilities are totally endless here. It could be a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc against a French Loire Sauvignon Blanc, a Napa Valley uh, against a Washington State Cabernet, or if you're more advanced or your, your knowledge and tasting abilities are a little greater, go more granulous with the same country and same grape but different regions like a high altitude Malbec as you get from the club versus a Mendoza a Malbec which is lower in altitude you'll definitely notice the difference there a Napa versus Sonoma Cabernet or Sangiovese from Chianti versus one from the Tuscan coast a Pinot Noir from the village of Pomar in Burgundy versus one from Von Romane if you really confident about your tasting abilities. It's just so interesting to approach wine that way if you can aim for wines that are roughly within the same price range to make it fairer simply on each region one against the other. If you have a big price variation well it's not all that fair. So get wines of roughly the same price and run the price comparison test in another tasting setup as we'll talk about in just a minute. Also here, preferably line up wines that are about the same age, not too big a gap in uh, vintages, otherwise you get a big impact from the cellaring and the aging. Roughly the same age and you'll be fine. The origin of a wine is a crucial aspect to its quality and possibly the most fascinating aspect to explore with the fun comparison test we've just discussed. But if you want to go deeper into a single area, bring face to face two bottles of the exact same wine from two different vintages. Same winery, same grape, but from different years. This will probably require a little research beforehand to see and understand how two vintages may have been different from one another. Some vintages, especially in the New World, California, Argentina, can be very similar. So you want a warmer growing season against a colder one, for example, or a wet season in Bordeaux against a very dry one, for example. If you want to better understand the effect of aging or cellaring on a wine, compare a young vintage versus an older one, like the same one but 10 years apart, 10 years older, or line up many different, different vintages of the same wine, same winery, but over a long period of time. If you want to organize such a tasting and you tell a winery that this is your favorite vino and you want to organize this lineup with your wine enthusiast friends, a wine club, 
a lot of them will be more than welcome to help you and maybe help you get some older vintages of that wine so you have a really complete and really fascinating experience a little tip from a wine professional when we taste different wines of different regions but roughly the same vintage we call this a horizontal tasting more like a geographical tasting horizontal when you taste wines from different vintages the same wine this is called a vertical tasting so if you talk to anybody about lining up different wines of the different vintages of the same wine that's a vertical tasting good to know Exploring further, say you have a favorite wine style, a favorite grape. You also have a favorite area you love, Pinot Noir from the central coast of California, for example, or you love Chianti from Italy, or Rioja from Spain. Well, simply line up wines from different producers from that area. What can be fun if you do that, how I would advise you to do it? would be to print out spec sheets of each wine from each producer's website prior to the tasting and have it on hand next to you. But do not study them at all before the tasting. If you know beforehand that the wine has more oak uh, than the other or it has more alcohol or it's from a more limestone rich soil in a cooler climate then you when you get to tasting you'll smell the wine and you'll try to match what you smell to what you know what you've read about the wine and that's not ideal you might get yourself influenced you influence yourself in believing you smell more oak in that wine, for example. It's best to start the other way around. Start from what you smell in a particular wine, not knowing exactly how it was made or what the intention was be behind the wine from the winemakers, and then try to match that afterwards to the spec sheet if you can and explain, oh yeah, uh, this wine seems richer and I can see, I can tell that it has a little more alcohol than that one. Doing it this way, you learn a lot faster. If you're somewhat blind to what you're tasting, you can even go fully blind tasting, which is probably the real, real best way, fastest way to learn more. Finally, and this is probably the most fun one here, compare wines of different price tags to one another and make sure you and no one can tell which wine is which. A proper blind tasting, it has to be to be fun. So you can cover up the bottles really well with aluminum foil or a paper bag. You get those paper bags at your local wine shop sometimes that fit the bottles really well. You can grab an entry-level cabernet from a winery, for example, and line it up against their reserve cab, for example, or one of their single vineyards to compare how they are different and which one you like best. Or you can compare a Pinot from the bottom shelves at your local wine shop to a premium one. You can throw a third medium ranch in there and mix them up really well just to throw everyone out with this blind tasting. Those are really always extremely entertaining and you hear a lot of people saying different things which wine they think is the most expensive for this reason or that reason. It's always great to, to, to understand what people think and you know how people get fooled sometimes with the price tags. It's a good thing to know yourself what you like also really well which is very important sometimes you'll find out that you actually don't like the best or the most expensive wine the most you happy with the mid-range or you really quite like that entry-level Pinot that you just bought you've just found yourself a good everyday cheap wine to go with and these were my four tips to organizing a fantastic wine tasting party with your friends, the people you love, anybody who is interested in wine or just have fun yourself digging, loving to compare different wines and having fun is always the best way to learn more easily.
these were my tips. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of Vino. Cheers.